pleasure of speaking with Frederick DeGray of H2O Innovation. How are you today? I'm doing great, Tracy. Thank you. Well, I just want to talk to you because you've had so much good news and you just announced an acquisition of utility partners that will add $34.5 in top-line revenues. Now, that sounds pretty, pretty amazing to me. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about this? That's correct. Well, it is transformational for many reasons, not only financially, but it is truly impacting our business model. Um, as you may know, H2 Innovation so far has been relying on two business pillars. The first one being the project, which is the flagship of the corporation for the past 16 years. Over the years, we start to build the second pillar, um, the specialty production services. And now finally, through this acquisition, we're having a third pillar complementing the whole business offering. Uh, which then brings us to the operation and maintenance market. Recently, you impressed the market, too, when you were nominated for Water Company of the Year. I mean, just the shortlist uh, announcement was, was significant. And then, of course, you went ahead and you won. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? Well, obviously, we're extremely proud because it's, it's really a pledge to what we have been trying to do over the last 16 years, which is truly building a solid water treatment company. Now being among you know these top leaders uh, innovator, and innovators um, on the planet, I mean it's it's an honor. Um, but it is, I think, uh, also uh, the result of the strategy that we have deployed over the last few years to to bring these innovations to the market, and it is truly recognized by our customers. Of course, I mean this was this was sizable news. You had you were going up against three other international global global players like GE. Can you tell us how this may have affected your business? Uh, any anybody reaching out to you as a result of becoming the global water company of the year? Well, I mean, as as a, it is a true recognition for sure. So it is definitely giving it a big stamp, you know, to what we have been trying to do and a validation and what we have been trying to do. But fundamentally, I mean, we keep pursuing our strategy, which is essentially providing uh, advanced design or solutions um, that will open up, you know, the market, the membrane filtration market to our customers. In a sense that what has been done over the past years by providing water treatment systems, integrating one single membrane, um, today what H2O is providing is a platform on which we'll be able to integrate uh, many more different membranes than providing more freedom of choice for our customers when it comes to membrane replacement. Well, I, I, I respectfully, I do appreciate that there are a number of membrane uh, recognition technologies out there. What made H2O Innovation number one in the world? Well, H2O Innovation as a system integrator um, really decided to take the position of being able to, as the name said, integrate these different kind of membranes available out there for the benefit of our customers. So instead of locking our customers into one specific design with one related to one specific membrane, the open platform of the FiberFlex, for example, is providing more freedom of choice to our customers. Um, allowing the customers in five years or eight years or 10 years from now to replace these modules, these membranes, with any membranes out there uh, that will be available at that, at that time. Well, let's talk, you know, in addition to the utility partners uh, acquisition and how that's going to change your company. I mean, last year your revenues increased by 40% and your last quarterly results for the period ending March 31st you published a revenue improvement of 14% and EBITDA growth of 46%. Now, can you talk to us a little bit more about how uh, you think this is going to improve your uh, revenue moving forward? Well, I think, you know, so far in the last quarter that you just mentioned, we showed our investors that we're growing our EBITDA faster than the revenue, which is very healthy. And this is exactly what we wanted to show. Now, moving forward, uh, yes, we're adding another and bolting on another $34 million, but most importantly, uh, we are also transforming our business model by adding true recurrent revenues coming from service contracts signed over a number of years. So we are gaining significant predictability into our revenues recognition. We're gaining predictability into earnings and into EBITDA performance as well, as we will have now with the three pillars. 65% or two-thirds of our business relying on higher recurrent revenues at higher margins. So we think that as we move forward by keeping, you know, innovation present in what we're doing, 
uh, be able to ramp up, you know, the EBITDA to a 8% and plus performance. Okay, obviously, as a shareholder of H2O Innovation, uh, your reoccurring revenue is, is very interesting to me. So uh, I understand you have a numerous or you have endless backlog of projects right now. Can you explain the reoccurring revenue model a little bit more for me and, of course, our audience? Well, the re recurring revenues comes from two things right now in H2O. The specialty products that we're selling being specialty chemicals, softwares, uh, controller solutions that we're selling uh, moving forward. Um, but also now with the new acquisition from the operation and maintenance service we're going to offer to our existing customers. So there's numerous um, opportunities that relies into the backlog of HQO, the backlog of projects we have, which stands at $35 million. Um, we believe that there is existing opportunities that relies in this backlog. But also for us, the possibility to go back to the old customers of H2O Innovation, the systems already installed, and, and pursue an offering of operation and maintenance contract to these existing customers. And we do have more than 650 systems installed in North America. You also recently announced opening uh, an office in Spain. You've been expanding. We're talking about reoccurring revenue here. Can you tell us uh, where H2O Innovation is around the world? I, I want our investment audience to appreciate how global your company has become. So for the uh, two pillars of our company, the, the project business itself, and now with the new acquisition coming from the operation and business, we're essentially focusing in North America, Canada, and U.S. However, for the specialty products and services, we are exporting into more than 40 countries. We're exporting our chemicals, our couplings business, through a network of distributors and agents. And the reason why we opened an office in Spain uh, earlier this year was essentially to get closer to our existing European customers that we have. Out there. All right. And what should we expect or anticipate? Because we've had a lot happen here in this last quarter as shareholders in, say, the upcoming quarter, Frederick. Well, keep executing our backlog. We do. We're starting the new year on July 1st with a healthy uh, backlog that we're going to deliver in the current year. Uh, so keep chasing opportunities. We do have an existing sales pipeline of more than $175 million of opportunities that we're expecting to convert. Second, keep growing and keep adding more products to our existing portfolio when it comes to the specialty products and services, which is the second pillar. And, and finally, integrate the new acquisition and start to generate organic growth from this new acquisition. Well, Frederick, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on your utility partners uh, acquisition. Thank you very much, Tracy.